Well, a warm welcome. It's Wednesday the 21st of September. Now, unfortunately, I needed to um, modify yesterday's uh, video. And this is the um, um, modified, modified uh, version. Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 20th of September. Now, I want to show you some pretty fascinating data today. It really seems that the COVID vaccines are judged by a completely different standard to all other medications by the regulatory bodies in our countries. And it's really hard to understand. Let me give you the data and then we'll critique the data after that. So here's some of the data here. Now, this is the uh, report to the VERS, Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, in the United States. And you can see it was pretty low all the way through from 1990. The reason it's blue and red is that there's different jurisdictions. Uh, the United States VERS system takes in information from different jurisdictions. But if we look at the red line as, as all reports, that's probably the best one. And then let me zoom in on that. COVID vaccine rollout begins then. And what happens to the amount of adverse events uh, at that time? Well, I think they go up quite a bit, don't they? Now, yes, you're going to say there was more vaccines given. That's true. But accounting for that, we were reminded of the Australian data, actually, when I saw this graph. Such a dramatic increase when the COVID vaccines began. And this was the data we looked at from West Australia, Western Australia. And we found out that the the amount of adverse events per vaccine were about 22 times more than the previous, what we might call conventional non mRNA type vaccines. Really quite startling difference. So that's the Australian data. That's the US data. And these are so similar occurring at the same time. This just really can't be coincidence. It really can't be coincidence that this has happened at the same time in two countries. And if we add the data, we could see it from other countries as well. So that's the Australian data. So uh, these, are, these are other data from OpenVerse. 27,506 myocarditis, pericarditis. Remember, this is all from the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System in the US. Severe allergic reactions, 46,000. Uh, permanently disabled. Now, this is from OpenVerse. So this is their interpretation of the VERS data, 67,727. But of course, it depends on the definition of permanent. We are incredibly hopeful. And there's some very promising new treatments that indicate that uh, there may be a lot of hope for people that are in this difficult uh, situation. Um, so we can only say this is permanent in, in, in the years to come. So that is somewhat tentative, but people have long term, uh, because now it's been several years, of course, so there's a fairly long term problems already, even if it's not permanent. Shingles, um, hospitalizations over 200,000, anaphylaxis, the severe allergic reaction just over 10,000. Urgent care referrals, 152,000. Bell's palsy, 17,000. Now, of course, it's easy to read these numbers, but these are all individuals who have been uh, suffering and are affected. Heart attacks, uh, 27,789. Uh, Life-threatening other conditions, 38,420. Now, I'm going to give you a, that slide that just flashed up there is from a book called Where There Is No Doctor by David Werner, which has got some really, really good uh, considerations of the philosophy of healthcare. So, so let's look at that now, uh, bearing in mind all that data we've looked at. Uh, now, this is the mum saying, do you think he needs an injection? And the health worker is saying, this is the doctor, the nurse, whatever you want, to, the, the village health worker in this situation. No, all he has is a cold. You will get better by himself. Let him rest. Give him good food and lots to drink. Strong medicine won't help and might even harm him. When medicines are not needed, take time to explain why. Now, I remember reading this for the first time in 1983. It's exactly the same. It's from the, it hasn't changed in, in the subsequent editions. And it's just so wise, isn't it? Medicines are needed sometimes, but sometimes they're just not needed. And what we need to do as healthcare professionals is take time to explain, which hopefully is what I'm trying to do now. So sometimes medicines are needed. I am not taking an anti-vaccine stand. I'm not taking an anti-medication stand by all means. I've given out vaccines and medications for the last 45, 46 years. Um, 
and sometimes they're needed, but other times they're not. In this case, all he had is a cold. And again, as I say, I'm not making any point there. I remember reading this in uh, 1983. So he doesn't need an injection because he's got a cold. He just needs good food, good rest, and he'll get better on his uh, own. Wise words there from the uh, pen of David uh, Werner of where there is no doctor. Now, going on, I want to look at a bit of a comparison between COVID vaccines and other vaccines and drugs, because, again, we've just got this completely, I don't know, the regulatory authorities seem to have two completely separate standards. I just don't get it. Well, kind of got a few ideas, but nothing we can share. Anyway, um, you've got your own ideas as well, so there's no need for me to spell it out. But anyway, here we have uh, Vigi Access, which is the World Health Organization database. Uh, this is the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System, the United States. This is uh, the European uh, Endura Vigilance, and this is the UK Yellow Card Scheme. So all the data we're going to look at is put together by the World Council for Health based on these databases. Let's look at that now, and it really is quite uh, enlightening. So this is a number of adverse events on uh, Vigi Access. Remember, this is the World Health Org Organization. Um, so tetanus. Uh, data on tetanus vaccine has been collected since 1968, and the number of adverse events is 15,381. Now, I have seen people with uh, tetanus, and I always make sure my tetanus is up to date. It is up to date. All my patients in accidents and emergency, we always checked their tetanus. If it wasn't up to date, we would boost them. In fact, sometimes if it was a particularly tetanus-prone wound, we, we would give, uh, we'd give other prophylaxis as well. Um, but um, anyway, that just shows that adverse events, relatively uncommon. I think millions of doses of tetanus have been given. Polio, been on the go since 1968. Slightly more, 123,000 adverse reactions. Influenza B, that vaccine's been used since 1968. Uh, 90,000 adverse reactions. COVID-19, on the go since 2020, 4 million. So 15,000, 123,000, 90,000, 4 million. The adverse events are just on a completely different, literally, order of magnitude. Um, quite incredible. Quite incredible. And as we said, that data is from um, Vigi Access, kept by the World Health Organization. 169 times more of this adverse reaction with the COVID vaccine compared to the flu vaccine. And yet it's still being recommended. I, I am um, amused. Now, this is, uh, this is the European data here. So here we see measles vaccines, uh, a heck of a lot of those been given out, 673 million. Uh, adverse events, 49,000. Polio vaccines, again, a large number, uh, just under 9,000 adverse events. Influenza vaccines, untold numbers have been given, 44,000 adverse events. COVID vaccines based on 341 million in the European area, 1.8 million. Again, the number of adverse reactions from the COVID vaccines is just a different order of magnitude. Why are the authorities not acting? Just no comparison between these numbers. Now, just looking at common drugs here, um, paracetamol has been on the go since, or well, the records have been on the go since 1968. Ibuprofen from 1969, and this, this is a, a Benadryl's an antihistamine, on the go since 1964. Now, paracetamol, um, this is on the yellow card scheme in the UK. Vaccine, uh, paracetamol adverse, not vaccine, paracetamol <laughs> adverse reactions reported, 25,000. Ibuprofen, just over 16,000. Uh, antihistamine, 2,165. COVID-19 vaccines, 450,000. It's just on a different, completely different scale, the, the amount of adverse reactions compared to common medications. Uh, this is um, most common adverse events reported by reaction type. Uh, Vigi Access, the European, this is the WHO one, the World Health, the European one and the UK one. And we see nervous system disorders, musculo and connective tissue disorders, gastrointestinal disorders. Um, our numbers are given 
there. Again, it, it can be grouped into these things means it's probably not um, coincidence that there's a common thing going on here. And thankfully, the cardiac events are are less common because they're often more serious. So um, that's the data I wanted to look at. Now, I'll just briefly do a bit of a, a critique on this. So this is um, open. This is open VARES here. Now, this is the VARES data. This is some VARES data here. This is the latest VARES data here. Now, as you see, it's somewhat um, it's somewhat complicated and is good for statisticians. Um, so it's good that open VARES has uh, simplified this because, of course, as a uh, non-statos, you and me can't really access this kind of <laughs> this kind of data. So the data we've just looked at is a. Uh, is simplified from this data, which of course is good for the rest of us who aren't statisticians. Um, but check it out for yourself. It's based on the, uh, so that's open VARES there, um, based on the uh, the VARES data. Um, guide to interpreting VARES data. Now this is from VARES itself. That, that they, they say this, under-reporting is one of the main limitations of passive surveillance systems, which is what a vaccine adverse events reporting system is. Uh, it's a common problem. Uh, VARES receive reports from only a small fraction of the actual adverse events. This is true. Now, this is another official paper here, Electronic Support for Public Health Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System. And they actually come up with the data that uh, a tiny amount of drug reactions, way less than a percent, are actually reported. 1 to 13% of serious adverse events are reported to the Food and Drug Administration. So pretty low, and for vaccines it can be as low as 1%. In the UK it's probably only 2 to, uh, I mean certainly no more than 10% are reported. It could be as low as 2% being reported. So we've got massive under-reporting here. So when, when we look at uh, the adverse events that were reported in the open VARES data that we've just looked at here, um, th th these are the adverse events reported here. So the... Um, the under-reporting, of course, would mean that these columns are way higher. Maybe that could be 10 times higher um, it, it, it be because of the under-reporting. But, of course, we need to bear in mind, and it's important to add, and, and the VARES do add this, these are only showing uh, temporal correlations. There's no proof of causality here. But the fact that we've looked at the same events in Australia, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, does, does fulfil one of the Bradford Hill criteria, indicating that causality is... Uh, it's certainly possible, likely, probable, um, probably probably even more than that. Um, but it is a temporal correlation. So if, if, if it's just a temporal correlation, what it might mean, and this is this is the this is the data we looked at. So just to give you a, an indication here, that's uh, that's two hundred thousand on that line. That's four hundred thousand on that line. That's six hundred thousand on that line. Eight hundred thousand on that line. And that's uh, a million up here. Um, adverse events. Now, um, if some of these are temporal correlations, then it could be, well, the real number are, are only, is only half that. that. That's quite possible. So that would represent over-representation of adverse events. But of course, if we're only getting 10% reported, that means instead of this being, suppose we were getting 10% reported, that would mean instead of this line being 10 times higher, um, it would only be uh, five times higher. So... Um, I think the under-reporting uh, massively overcompensates for the uh, the fact that these are temporal correlations and any individual case, uh, causality cannot be uh, demonstrated. So we'll leave that there. There's some data there for you to think about. Um, do check it out for yourself. Um, just huge differences in the in the amount of adverse events that seem to be tolerated there between COVID vaccines and other drugs and um, other vaccines and uh, COVID vaccines. Phenomenal amount of difference and yet authorising authorities around the world are still recommending these vaccines. I've got some ideas why, you've got some ideas why, but um, on this video I'm going to finish by saying I'm bemused. Thank you for watching.